Sequence of operations in the dental laboratory. After measuring, the dental technician receives this detailed analysis sheet with values for programming the protar articulator, complete with visible movement patterns in all three dimensions. At first, the technician orientates to the position of the digma bite fork. In this case, to position 1. Here we now have to finally position our digma bite fork, set the upper jaw model in the impression, check whether everything is neatly positioned, and then articulate using a special mounting plaster. It is important that the plaster is mixed to a creamy consistency and is not too thick. First of all we put plaster on the model. And then a second portion in the mounting plate of the articulator upper part. It is essential that the articulator upper part is completely filled with plaster in order to make it easier for a possible repositioning of the model. Now close the articulator without using any pressure. Give a short tap on the upper part and let the plaster rest a while to release the tension. Allow to harden without moving the model or the setup during this time. After the plaster has fully hardened, the articulator upper part can be opened. Remove the bite fork and place to one side, together with the mounting table. Next we take the incisal pin and screw it firmly into the articulator connection. Check that the incisal pin is also neatly adjusted to zero. After mounting the incisal pin, we affix the individually adjustable incisal plate to the articulator upper part, fixing neatly. Now we can close the articulator. When mounting the model, it is very important to check that the shift angle, or perhaps any built-in retrusion inserts, are adjusted to zero. Check both sides and fix. Now we can turn the articulator over so that the upper part lies underneath. With the help of the obtained centric registration, we can now set the lower jaw model in the articulator with the mounting plaster. Open the articulator, check that the centric locks are firmly shut, and check for a neat positioning of the central registration. If necessary, we have to fix any deep fissures or interdental peaks with an instrument. Next we place the lower jaw model on the impression. Fix a mounting plate to the articulator lower part and close the articulator. Check how much space we have for the mounting plaster. Then we put plaster on the lower jaw, spread it evenly over the model base and refill the lower mounting plate with plaster. Here once again ensure that it is neatly and evenly filled with plaster. Hold the model in the centric position Carefully close the articulator and lightly tap on it so that the plaster cannot transfer any tension onto the vertical dimension.
now hold the model in the centric position until the plaster has hardened. For this reason, it is essential to use a fast setting mounting plaster. When the mounting plaster has completely hardened, we can bring the articulator into the correct position again, open the upper part, remove the centric registration and close it. Before we can make any comments about the function and articulation of this model, first we have to program the displayed values into the articulator. Here we see the values for the right TMJ with a condylar path inclination of 36 degrees according to campus plane. Likewise, the whole information for the left joint. And here in the middle we see an area with the title Tooth Guidance. We can transfer these values to the adjustable incisal plate. Let us look first of all at the right joint condylar path inclination 36.2 degrees. We opened the appropriate locking mechanism for the condylar path inclination and can now adjust these values here on this scale. Firstly we transfer the right joint inclination value of 36.2 degrees to the horizontal condylar path inclination scale of the right joint. The scaling is at this black marking. We now move our protar housing into this position. Adopt the value of 23.2 degrees in the left joint and also fix this position. Now we can now set the Bennett angle for the right joint, in this case 8.1 degrees. To do this we open this wheel here at the top to display the scale for the Bennett angle. The setting is made here at this small black projection then finally fixed. We do the same for the left joint. Here we have an angle of 4 degrees. Now open the locking mechanism for the left joint. Here you see the projection again. Now set this to 4 degrees and fix with this screw. The next parameter to adjust would be the mediate side shift, but in this case it does not exist. The recording for both joints has shown a mediate side shift of zero. The mediate side shift is set here at the top using this black ridge screw. If a value had been shown, we would loosen this screw and adjust the setting in steps of 0.5 millimeters. The fourth adjustment to be found is the evaluation of the shift angle. In the right joint, minus 20 degrees lateral trusion was measured. Here at the right joint we can open this locking screw and at this pin adjust the shift angle from 0 to plus 20 or minus 20 degrees. Tighten the screw again here. The value on the working side is now fixed. For this analysis, we find the same value for the left side. And proceed as before in the left condylar housing. Here the locking screw and here the adjustment pin. 
Both articulator joints are now perfectly programmed with the patient data in three dimensions. In the center, we find additional data for the protrusion values and canine guidance to the left and right. This data can be set using the individually adjustable incisal table. First the middle, retrusion. Here we can set the retrusion value of 46.2 degrees. We release the screw and here we can set the value on this dial. The left lateral movement in the anterior guidance is equivalent to 23.2 degrees. On the individual anterior guidance plate left we can finally set this value. Similarly, lateral movement right, 19.9 degrees. Loosen the screw, set it and fix. Now we have perfectly programmed the articulator in three dimensions. Not only for both joints, but also the anterior guidance. After programming the articulator, the incisal pin can be removed and we can close the models very carefully. Then we can see if this patient's models are identical in the habitual and centric positions or if a discrepancy exists. To make the work for the dentist and patient easier and reduce the treatment time it makes sense to have the individualized para-occlusal spoon and the production of the inclined registration made in advance in the laboratory. For this we take a blank of the para-occlusal spoon for the lower jaw together with a registration plate and a marking pin. So that the spoon can be positioned in the patient's mouth without problems and has no early contact by articulation movements, we first trace the vertical overbite of the upper cusps over the lower teeth. Then we shape the two arms of the paraocclusal spoon so that they lie relatively even to the lower jaw. say with 1 to 2 mm clearance. Then take more light curing material, this time spoon material, roll it between the fingers and press it onto the inner side of the para-occlusal spoon. Next we position this on the lower dentition. Fix it and finish cleanly with an instrument as needed. Then place it into a light curing unit. We put the finish spoon to one side and turn our attention to the production of the inclined registration. First we have to mark the position for the marking pin. It lies somewhere around the conjunction between the two palatal cusps of the upper fifth tooth and the middle. We coat the upper jaw with synthetic material harden it in a light curing unit and then finish it neatly and cleanly.
the lower jaw marking plate is positioned so that it is no higher than the lingual cusps. And in the frontal area, at about the height of the cervical edge of the lower incisors. The procedure is as described before. Mount this plate with synthetic material and fix.